Hi guys, so this video is about dual pressure control gauges, like this. So this is a dual pressure control gauge. So usually um, pressure gauges are to activate something, either a pump, in this case it's a compressor. So here we have a dual pressure gauge. So for really maximum efficiency, you're better off changing these every year. So here we are. So you've got low pressure gauge, high pressure gauge. So really what activates this is the spring tension inside, which over time can become quite tense, can become quite stiff. So it's always ideal to uh, change them. So you've got your cut in pressure, your cut off pressure, and here you've got your pref pressure differential. So the low pressure uh, gauge is always the one on the left with two with two gauges on, two bars on. And the reason why that is, that's the low pressure cut in and that's a differential. Now, if you look at this as well, at the top, you've got three screws on this. These are for adjusting high pressure, low pressure, and just here we have the pressure differential. This one's fairly old, you can see. Usually on pressure control units like this, there's a, there's a lever to um, bypass it as well. So right at the back, there's a little lever. I'm going to just adjust the low pressure side. And if you look, you can see the spring move. So here we've got a pressure switch. Here we've got a dual pressure control. As you can see, it's either side of the compressor. It's above the discharging suction line. This one's got a reset button on it as well, look. So back to the compressor controller. So here we have a bypass. So if I zoom in. That might be good for fault finding. If you think there's potential blockage in the line or restriction. Here's low pressure. So the pressure, so for example, in this scenario, the compressor will kick, kick in at three bar. And it will work for two bar. And the compressor will switch off, cycle off when it gets to 20 bar. Just the pressure at the top. So here we have the pressure control low pressure, high pressure, and in between you've got the compressor. So it's always good to have two coils and the connections for the um, pressure controller really needs to be about 12 inches either side of the compressor. With these connections as well, it's always good to connect them using ru rubber brackets or clips just to absorb any anti-vibration. Here we've got a compressor and the pie work either side. So if the pressure control unit goes underneath the refrigeration system, underneath the compressor, it's always good to link up from above this way. Therefore, it prevents any oils or any uh, debris getting in the line and blocking it. Brief wiring schematic here. Power supply comes up. Here's the spade connectors. Comes up, goes through high pressure switch, goes through the low pressure switch, goes through and then sends a power supply to the compressor and there it's got the relay, it's got the thermal overload.